Hello and welcome to Captain's Dry Dock and in the Dry Dock today I'll be showing you how I get the best results from using automotive spray cans. Let's make it real. So just a disclaimer, this is a method that works for me. Now there are hundreds if not thousands of YouTube videos out there of all different methods and ways of actually getting the best finish using spray cans. However, this is what works for me and if you find it works for you, then you're welcome. Step one, I have to get the supplies. Now before actually painting with the final coat that, that gives the colour and the effect, I need to make sure that it adheres well to the surface and to do that I need primer. After the primer, then I can actually put down the paint that I want to give the effect and colour that I need using, in my case, gloss white for plastic. Then when you have that lovely finish to it, you want to make sure you protect your paint using either varnish or clear lacquer. Oh, before I forget, other than the paint, there's a few other things that you need to get that really, really perfect finish on your paint, which is an assortment of wet and dry at all different grades, which I pack into a lovely handy folder to organise. Also, what I discovered recently are these replacement nozzles that give a better and even spread when you're using paint cans. Yes, you're watching me rub my crotch and butt, or to be precise, the parts of my Stormtrooper armour. And perhaps one of the most important things to do when preparing something for paint, especially when it's plastic, because plastic's notoriously non-porous, meaning it's super smooth and there's nothing for the paint to really bite into. You may have experienced that before when you painted something and then later on down the line it flakes off or it scratches off really, really easy. And that's probably the reason why, not just because it's not being clean either. Now I'm using 240 wet and dry and what that does that roughens up the very top surface of the panel meaning that when I actually spray a coat of paint on that it really gets into the material. One thing to bear in mind is make sure you don't use a really heavy grit wet and dry or sandpaper because you'll end up scratching the surface and when you paint over it it's going to look like it's going to be a terrible finish. So I would say around about 240 and higher in regards to the uh, fineness of the grain is all you need. Now that's all sanded and ready, meaning the fact that there's no shiny bits all over the surface which I'm going to paint, I need to clean it. Now there's one or two ways of doing this, which everyone can do. You can go to your sink and just use soap and water, which is good enough and just make sure it's all dried off and make sure there's no soap left on the surface, meaning lots and lots of rinsing. Or the method I prefer is alcohol. Now alcohol is a fantastic cleaning solution and it evaporates because this one is about 90% proof. So I better not drink it. And all I need to do is just put onto a piece of um, kitchen towel and then in circles, rub down the part. And it's, it's such a good cleaning agent that you can just see the dirt coming off. And it really highlights the fact that it's so important to clean the surface of these parts because as you can imagine, dirt and grease underneath the paint, it's gonna fill at some point. Now the parts are prepared and cleaned, the next step is primer. Now this is a white primer. Usually I recommend going for a grey primer, but I've said before in my previous videos in regards to actually building this Stormtrooper armour, is the problem is with a darker primer is that if you scratch the top surface of the uh, coat that you're finally going to use, it will really show up like a sore thumb. And this is going to get a lot of uh, battering when I'm going to a cosplay or comic con event. So in this case, I'm actually going to use a white plastic primer. As with all cans, you have to give them a good shake. And then with overlapping coats, just spray across the entire piece. Now I don't have to be too exact or careful with this because this is just a primer coat. Once it dries, I'm gonna be using wet and dry to smooth it off later before applying the finishing coats. Also, when it comes to primer, it, there's always a debate of how many coats of it you need to put onto your surface. Now, as it's primer, you only need to really put down one coat, um, in my experience. But you may find that you might, might need to put down more coats depending on the type of material you're working on. 
now that the parts are primed, I just have to let them dry properly. And when I say properly, I mean to the point that the paint hardens. So then I can sand it down later and make it nice and smooth in preparation for the final coats. Now, I would say leave it overnight, 24 hours at room temperature, although you can speed up the process by using one of these. Yes, you are looking at a hairdryer. So what I'll do, I'll stand up this hairdryer, leave it on at, a, let's just say, a moderate heat, uh, close up the tent, and then these should be ready within 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the temperature it gets up to in a tent. That's now dry. That only took around about 10 minutes in this tent with the hairdryer, and it's a beautiful day as well. The next thing I need to do is get hold of 1200 wet and dry, a bucket of water, and smooth off the top layer of paint. And what that does, that actually gets rid of any of the imperfections from the primer and makes it really smooth. So every so often, I'll dip this into the water, small light circles, and you can run your finger across it. You can feel when it's rough and when it's smooth. And that's what you want. You want a smooth surface. So then that'll be an ideal surface for the final coats of paint to go on. Here's a little tip to make sure the area where you're spraying is actually super clean. There's no dirt, dust that's going to be picked up by the aerosol. Use a little bit of water. And what I mean by that is spray the area with water. And what that will do, that will get, make sure that any dust and dirt stays where it is rather than floating around in the air and landing on your lovely paint finish. So all I'm doing is spraying the walls and the floor where the dust settles. Now to apply three coats of the paint, leaving ample time for each coat to properly dry. So let's talk about nozzles. These little plastic things have a massive impact on the final finish of your paint because these little plastic nozzles which come standard on automotive paint or shall we say all cans of spray paint have a nozzle which projects a cone shaped pattern which means the paint is dense in the middle and it's a circle and then feathers out which isn't ideal. What you want is what the professionals have with their paint guns where it's a flat fan shape and it's a nice even spread across the entire surface and it's a really nice fine spray as well but I have great news you can buy replacement nozzles which do the exact same job it's very basic but super cheap and all you need to do is this get your can remove the nozzle and replace it with a new nozzle I'm making sure that I'm using the replacement nozzle to get that really fine finish now always remember to make sure you mix up your can and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start away from the object, straight across, and only then I will depress the actual nozzle. And the reason I do that is because sometimes paint gets dry at the end of that nozzle and will sometimes flick out onto your paintwork. So it's better to start away from the object and as you start going across it, it should be a nice clean stream of paint going onto the surface. So the technique I'm using here is making sure that I'm going across very incrementally overlapping the last pass of the last spray I just did and not stopping. I'm only stopping just because I'm uh, narrating. But yeah, I wanna make sure that it stays wet as I cover the entire surface. And here's the result of the first coat, which is excellent. Now I'll wait for that to dry and I've got two more coats left. Cut to the next day and we're done. I love the result, it turned out perfect. And with just three layers, making sure there was ample time for each layer to dry before I applied the next layer, the surface turned out fantastic. However, with automotive paints, as the pressure starts running out and you run out of paint, you're gonna get a different action and different texture on the surface. So I prepared a worst case scenario and how to make it better, such as this. When using spray cans, sometimes it's very hard to get consistency, especially when they start running out of pressure. Now, this was the result. That is what you call an orange peel effect. So I needed to get to this stage. See the difference? So that's exactly the same paint job, but this one I treated differently afterwards. And this is what I did. So I got hold of some 1200 wet and dry, a very, very fine grit of sandpaper, and then made sure it's really wet and then rubbed down gently the surface of the part. 
Once I'd done that, I literally just spent 30 seconds on that, dried it off, and then used this stuff. Now, this is for headlights when they're fogged up and you rub them down to make them clear again, but essentially it's called tea cut It's a rubbing compound, a very fine cream, and then rub that in circles onto this part using a cloth and then wiped it off again. And then I had this. So I went from before to after. I'm going to say this is completed, but you're probably wondering what happened to the varnish and clear lacquer stage? Well, good question. This particular paint is designed to be robust for plastic, so there was real no need for any particular varnish or lacquer to protect it or give it that gloss finish because it does it all. However, with other types of automotive paint, you may need to use that, but be warned, there are so many different types out there, such as a matte finish, a satin finish, and a shiny gloss finish, just like you get with the cars. But if you are painting with metallic paint, such as silver, bronze, and gold, do not use matte varnish or lacquer, because what that does, it dulls it down completely to the point that is no longer a metallic. What I recommend is to use clear lacquer, which is what I use on my Star Trek badges and pips and gives a fantastic finish and also great protection. Thanks so much for watching this episode and I really hope you got something from this. Disclaimer, again, this is my method of how I paint my items and it can be applied to different types of plastics and different types of paints, but generally the method is the same. If you've got another way you like doing things and a better method, by all means, leave a comment down below. I love to read them all and get your feedback because again, there's always a better way of doing things. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching this episode. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And uh, you take care and I'll see you on the next episode on Captain's Dry Dock. Stay safe, everyone.